Captain Nakamura on board one, and we definitely have to watch this one. Uh, well, if this for some reason will be finished quickly, obviously immediately we jump to board two. Karyakin makes first appearance, yeah, first appearance in our broadcast. And yeah. I think if someone can stop Duda, then it's Karyakin, because Karyakin is also extremely good at blitz. He had a little bit of a rough start for his standards, but uh, if he starts winning and he gets his confidence, then uh, he is just uh, incredibly strong. However, there was a match between Karyakin and Duda in the internet, in chess.com's yeah. uh, speed championship, where Duda has eliminated Sergei, and uh, Sergei is definitely uh, wanting to take revenge for that. Yeah, interestingly, we felt like Karyakin is not performing that great, and then it felt like he started to win today. But no, today actually he made three draws. Andrei Kindreyev Martlakov and only won the very last game against Mirin. Well, that's also the reason why there is such a big gap yeah, between Karyakin right. and, uh, and the two leaders. Okay, and then I'm checking the ladies section and they will have round number 14, I believe. Yes, where on the first board it will be two Russian players, Bodna Ruk. Anastasia Bodnaruk will have white pieces against Ekaterina Lagno. Two Chinese grandmasters playing on board, two Juven Jun against Lea Tingye, Gary Fulina against Ushenina, Mamid Yarova against Hadem Al Sharyeh. And the games have started, so we have no choice but to go to open section, board one, Carson against Nakamura. Yeah. And one it's Queen's Gambit. No. Yeah, well, oh, what was the move order? I've missed it. I'm I've missed sure it talking, it was, it was 1c4, yeah. And this Queen's Gambit, Hikaru plays, I mean, it can, kind of became his very main line, right? And in this position after b6, there is a lot of uh, various tricky moves, but Magnus goes for a straightforward bishop d3. A very solid line for black, but zero winning chances. And he kind of needs winning chances if he wants the title himself, Hikaru Nakamura. I mean, yeah, draw against Magnus with black, nobody would mind that under different circumstances, right? But yeah, I mean but uh, his opening choice basically indicates that uh, he, he is not so much interested of winning this game. But yeah, it's kind of winning at any cost, right? Yeah. I mean, if he would be given a chance, if he will be given a chance, of course, he will, uh, he will try to take it. But, but safety first approach. Yeah, safety first. Uh, let's see, well, on the other hand, it doesn't look like Carson is getting a lot in this yeah, game. Yeah, but the black knight on a6 is kind of stuck, and the knight on b5 is very, knight very nicely placed. Knight on b5 is nicely placed, right. So that will be um, like, okay, I mean, it's a nice approach for Carson. I mean, you are playing for a slight plus. Yeah, Do you it, ever it suits him perfectly in case if uh, Karyakin beats Duda. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> then, then he might make a draw and then increase his, uh, yeah, his distance lead, with yeah. pursuers. Rook to c1. And I'm wondering if you ever consider taking with the pawn if black captures on d4, because it kind of leaves the knight on a6 without a single move. But probably you still take with the knight, yeah? Yeah, because black is kind of getting ready to go knight b8. Aha, uh -huh, rook to c8, knight e5, another... Aha, uh -huh, so that knight b8 can be met by knight c4. Yeah, knight c4 at is some point, yeah, it's yeah. clear. He prepares knight c4 as well as in some positions f2, f2, f3, f3 just yeah. to kick this centralized knight from e4 away. And Magnus 30 seconds ahead on the clock. Yeah, well, he Always has in a very comfortable situation. Very yeah. interesting way of spending time, which is not spending time at all. I mean, he's playing very, very fast. Yeah, but also we see uh, how important it was to have this World Championship match. I mean, it seems like he's very well prepared. He has so many ideas in all kinds of openings. So like for the uh, next half a year, he can uh, play on this old, old exactly. preparation. Knight d6. Uh, well, of course, the black's will to exchange the knight on b5 is understandable if this move works tactically. Yeah, white has a move like knight g6, but do you want to change those pieces or not? Yeah, that's that's hard to tell, right? Because knight g6, knight g6 might secure slight advantage, but maybe white thinks that I'm better anyway, so... Ah, right, maybe I go knight g6, and if black takes with h-pawn, maybe I take on d6 with, with the, the bishop. bishop. Maybe yeah. I want to keep the bishop. Okay. Yeah, knight g6, hg6, bishop d6, and uh, black cannot really take. 
so yeah. that we will by the way this uh, very exact line had been played between the two players in the Singfield Cup classical game in the last round where Magnus beat Hikaru in this very very long uh, uh, Rukan game, game, yeah. game yeah it actually was n nothing special right but then Hikaru made a couple of mistakes and he lost in the end uh, right, checking the other games, Karyakin against Duda is actually very, very sharp. Some Sicilian. Uh, the same uh, Shevening and stuff. Yeah, but Karyakin seems to be much more convi convincing than Nepal. Okay, so let's, but first, of course, let's finish with this one. Of course. Yeah, I'm just checking if there are like early results or something. Magnus Not really. Basically, today is the first time Magnus really taking his time, yeah? Mm -hmm. And finally went for knight takes d6, bishop d6. But this case he might have, might be regretting having spent so much time. Because this is a move he could have made instantly. Queen g4. Queen to g4. But those are the moves which I'm, I'm not liking against Hikaru because usually Hikaru is very good at reacting to all those... Uh, like direct threats. Yeah, yeah. strange-looking moves. Mm. And CD. Rook C8. But maybe Magnus has calculated something. Okay, now, now you mm. take with the rook, right? Yeah, but what, what are we missing? Some uh, brilliant knight f7? Yeah, if rook takes rook c8, knight, knight takes f7. Seven. Bishop f4, queen takes e6, threatening this. But you know. then knight c5. It's now with queen on b7, it's not made because ah, I'm covering yeah, the so f7. It will be square. a perpetual only. But if you take ed4, then black goes queen e4, for example. Well, or black or might be, or yeah. not might be, but better already, it feels like. Wow, what? What is knight yeah, takes so f7, on yeah. Magnus he does play, and Hikaru immediately grabs on f4, queen takes e6, knight c5, knight h6. It will be a draw. Yeah. It will be a draw. There is no this motive of queen g8, knight f7 mate, because the black queen is on b7. Yeah. Nice game. Yeah. And kudos to Hikaru for defending somewhat inferior position. But it was very strange. Hikaru was shaking his head at the end after knight takes f7, but. I mean, basically, during the whole game, he was dreaming to escape with a draw. <laughs> okay, but that's typical Hikaru. Mm. Let's switch to board two. If